just a quick note before I start this video, uh, I have already spoken to some of the developers of Flight Sim World and some of the things that I point out in this video are being already addressed. So great stuff. Very, very great stuff. So I will be making another video in a couple of weeks time after these these two first impression videos that will be having a look at what they've changed maybe a couple of weeks maybe a month's time just to give them a chance to sort a few things out and we'll come back to it anyway on to the first impressions hello youtube and welcome to flight sim world this is by dovetail games and this is the newest and the latest flight simulator to hit the market currently available in early access only on steam for about 20 pounds i believe um i have no doubt that that is going to go up in in price uh, but you know i thought i'd do a first impressions video this impre uh, this video might be in two parts i think yeah i think i'm going to do this video in two parts uh, the first part is going to be probably looking at uh, one looking at all the uh, interface and all that kind of stuff and taking a look at possibly just one plane taking it off and getting a, um, some sort of a feel for it and the second part would probably be taking out a different plane in different conditions uh, and just seeing what what it's like like that uh, what I have done is I have put some Nvidia inspector profile settings in which are the same as the ones that I put in in flight simulator 10 as some of you know I've, I've been playing a lot of flight simulators over the years uh, 2002 2004 10 I've tried out X-Plane, uh, I've tried out Prepared, and now I've got this Flight Sim World. Um, it is based on the same thing as Flight Simulator 10, 2004, and Prepared, so the same platform. It's the Microsoft ESP, which is, I think, Enterprise Simulation Platform. So it's based on that, which means, and I know some people are going to be uh, maybe watching this video and going, I'm going to be judging this a little unfairly, but I don't think it's going to be unfair because I'm going to be judging this against Flight Simulator 10 and against uh, Prepared. That's what I'm going to be judging this against because it's on the same platform, It's it's got the capabilities to do the same thing. Uh, before we do anything else, let's go into settings. So I have been playing around with this a little bit. As you can hear, you might just be able to hear the music. I have put that all the way down. If you have a look here, it's at zero, but for some reason, Zero is a uh, is still music. I have no idea. I, I really have no idea. I've cranked up the volumes of the engines of the cockpit a little bit more and the voice down a little bit. We probably won't be looking at voice. Um, in terms of realism, I've got it on hard, even though I could put it on custom. The only thing that I haven't switched on is random flight failures. Um, I haven't got auto mixture and haven't got unlimited fuel. As you can see, stress will damage the engine and everything is cranked right the way up. I've done hundreds, if not thousands of hours in flight simulators. I think I should be able to handle this. And because it is the ESP platform, it should be fairly fairly the same. Uh, set up the pilot details, obviously name, location. I've set it up as Heathrow, United Kingdom, you know, just your, just your standard stuff. And in display, as you can see, I'm running a GTX 880M. This is on my mobile, um, on my mobile, mobile uh, PC. So on my laptop, wow. Why did I get mobile from? Uh, so, it is on my laptop, which means I've put these down to mid-high because, you know, I, I don't think my laptop will be able to handle it. I've got windscreen raindrops on. Uh, aircraft labels I've turned off. I never, ever used to like having aircraft labels on. Uh, full screen I've enabled. I normally play in full screen. And we've got this thing saying multi-monitor cockpit. I haven't checked it out because I don't have two monitors to really check it out on. Uh, but I assume it may work. anti aliasing I've got as off. I'm going to switch that on. Uh, but with my NVIDIA inspector settings, I sh I've already got it to override. So if those settings are right, we should have an override on it. But I think we're still going to get lots of jaggy edges. It's something that we've had in Flight Simulator. Prepared's got it as well uh, to an extent. But Flight Simulator had it really bad. And getting rid of those jaggies is is a tough it's a tough gig um, same with uh, same with the filtering I've got uh, an tropic on I think this an tropic I could I don't know whether it's switching this off I've got an override on my Nvidia settings as well and I remember in flight simulator I used to have that off so I'm going to switch that off and just to see you know I'll just see what happens um, there we go okay Show log in ATC menu, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Same sort of pilot voices that we had in Flight Simulator 
and the units of measurement I've got in hybrid because I work in feet and millibars although I can I suppose I can work in inches as well but I work in feet and millibars so feet for height and millibars for pressure I don't work with meters not not for this anyway uh, last but not least controls right I'm using a Cytec X52 Pro Flight, uh, Pro Flight Controller and I think I should probably bring these null zones down I'm gonna bring all these null zones down just to see how it feels uh, because I, I've taken it out already a little bit and, and it did feel a little bit um, what's the right way to say it a little bit saturated yeah I think saturated would be the right term uh, I have no idea what why these sensitivities are high but I'm going to leave them up there uh, axes let's just get these axes correct so we've got our aileron and ele uh, elevator axis and that's not a problem let's go for the rudder axis is fine spoiler axis let's just double check this is yep that's my spoiler and I think do I need to invert that one I, I don't know invert yeah, I may need to invert that there we go okay throttle axis is fine and I, I don't think I need to really deal with deal with anything else actually you know what I'm not going to use a spoiler because I don't think we're going to need the spoiler so I'm gonna switch it over to be the prop axis actually mixture I'll do by hand let's let's use it to be the prop axis there we go okay so we've got all the controls as you can see just here very simple uh, compared to flight simulator this is very very simplistic controls um, you know that there isn't much there, there really isn't much if we go to all events as you can see actually those are coming back up never mind that's more like it that is definitely more like it that wasn't showing up uh, when I tried it last time that's better okay great um, what I'm going to do is I will all these are standard controls what I what I want is if I go to simulator event I want to see Capture screenshot is V. Okay, I'll remember that one. Um, joystick on off. I don't have to worry about. It's the view. I, I want to change the view ones. Oh, I remember progressive taxiing as well. I haven't used that in a long, long time. Let's go to all events. Search. Oh, let's use this search. Let's go for view. Here we go. Uh, changing view. No, I don't really want to change view. View pan. Yeah, that's the hat switch. Okay that's fine do I have a zoom for the view that I can do and apparently not mouse view yep shift and numpad decimal will reset it okay well we're not, we're not going to worry too much about that let's see what we can get so in here that's not too bad. Those options aren't too bad. Uh, I couldn't find some. I couldn't find options for VSync or any. I suppose this is using DX11, so we don't have to worry about any DX10 experimental that we used to have in Flight Simulator. Um, I couldn't find some top advanced options. And if you, if I just pop back in here to is it graphics display? As you can see, I don't know whether that's off. I don't know whether that traffic is off or minimum. In Flight Simulator, that was an absolute frame killer. Uh, when you had traffic running, it would it was just horrible. And so, I want to switch that off. I'm hoping that minimum is off. But there isn't like split traffic for road traffic, uh, water traffic, flight traffic. You know, that was something that we had in Flight Simulator, which I really liked. Because it meant I could put on road traffic, but switch off, you know, switch off um, air traffic. And that would give me some, some sort of realism on the roads, but an open sky for me to for me to fly in and you know it, it would allow me to just tweak things a lot better which this doesn't seem to do but you know it's early access so you never know you never know uh, I'm not going to be going into missions over here or training as you can see we've got we've got training if I just click this uh, continue you can see here I've done the introductory flight but you've got all these you know take off straight it's just basically your set, your lessons that we had in flight school uh, but we've got three sets so we've got the this one over here 
which is emergency landings, all that kind of stuff, to radio navigation, uh, you know, your your IT, um, your PPL, your ITPL, and all that kind of stuff, your instrument, your instrument rating. And here, it just seems to be for twin. So, multi-engine piston rating, so it's, it's for basically twin props. We, we'll learn how to fly twin props, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know whether it'd be anything anything else too intense. What I don't like about this is that if anyone's played Flight Simulator before, Flight Simulator had a a whole learning center. And I really like that learning center. And given that this is supposed to be something for people coming into Flight Simulation, and I'll show you why, and I'll explain why as soon as I get on the on the runway, why I think this is for people coming into Flight Simulation as opposed to people who are experienced at Flight Simulation. Um, I think, you know, it's it's something that I would have expected. I was expecting to have some sort of uh, lessons, just like we had in in uh, you know in FSX, uh, a whole library full of all sorts of information, and I, it was really really cool. I learned a lot from FSX. Um, what's this? These are missions, so we've got a few missions here. So we've got Central Europe, there you go. Midnight Express, cross, cross control, the impossible turn overpower. You can see they're only five minutes or so. Lights out, low and fast, um, North Atlantic Ferry. These are a bit longer, abandoned for a reason. Yeah, these are a bit longer. Oh, that's not what I meant to press. Well, let's get out of that anyway. Let's go back home. Let's go to a free flight and see what happens. So I'm going to choose an aircraft. Uh, we've got a few aircraft available. Unfortunately, this is it at the moment. And they're all general aviation aircraft. They're not... Uh, they're not commercial jetliners or military or anything like that. So you're not going to be able to fly your you know, F-18s or F-14 Tomcats. Even though, I suppose, if they were available in FSX and this is the same platform, eh, you'd probably be able to bring it in. I think you'd... I, I don't know if it's possible. I'm thinking it might be uh, because, you know, people brought things into prepared from FSX. You know, it's particularly the likes of PMDG. You know, they just updated it for prepared uh, but it's essentially the same product for their you know the 737 NGX or the 747 whatever it is so I'm assuming you'll be able to bring them in somehow but at the moment we've only got props so you can see we've got uh, two twin props and one two three four five single props that's a tail dragger so it looks like we've got one is that a tail dragger I think we've got two tail draggers and then we've got three conventional uh, three three wheel aircraft here and then we've got um, we've got this one which is the DA twin star DA 42 and then we've got the PA 32 uh, Seneca 5 is that Seneca 5 or Seneca V I think that's Seneca 5 but I don't know um, I've never been too much of a fan of the tail draggers I just it's it used to always confuse me. The angle of a tail dragger used to always confuse me. So I'm actually going to... I think I'll take out this diamond star. We'll take this plane out. It's got a top speed of 137 knots. And I'll show you a few things. We can now click config. And we've got the all the information. You can see that's quite a fancy render. We can't drag the render around or anything. It's a fixed image. But it's quite fancy. It's quite nicely done. Look, you've got the uh, blueprints and stuff all around there which I think is is nice to see um, and it just gives you some information about the plane so manufactured diamond 137 knots is its cruise um, range 714 nautical miles maximum speed uh, 178 knots stalling at 53 uh, your maximum uh, maximum takeoff weight your rate of climb is a thousand feet per minute or thereabouts 16,000 feet uh, ceiling so we can't go higher than that otherwise we'll be in the flight you know we'll be trying to break out the flight envelope and that's going to go really badly uh, takeoff distance tells you takeoff and landing distance pretty good empty weight you know 792 kilos that's actually even less than my car and I've got a very very light car and that's actually weighs less than my car um, fuel capacity of 189 liters and you can see crew passengers so that's pretty cool it even gives you the engine and propeller I like that I like that level of detail that they've put in there and it's also a lot easier to read than we've ever seen before on a flight simulator in my opinion 
If we go to quick edit, we can actually change around what sort of fuel we've got, if we want any failures, and what sort of payload we have. So, I'm just going to put a payload of just the pilot. So, there we go. Um, and in total, if we put the fuel to be, let's say, I think I'll put 50% fuel, even though I'm not going to be using 50% fuel. But I'll just put 50% anyway, whilst we fly around. Um, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's a thousand. Hmm. Now I'm a little confused. Because that was not what I... Okay. Well, that's a bit odd. Let's put uh, 50 and 50 in the tanks. Okay. Payload. Yeah, we'll put the pilot in. Failures. We can set up a whole bunch of failures here. I'm not going to set up any of them. You know, right round to the transponder failing and all that. And liveries, there. there's one here, but I know some planes have multiple liveries. So, we've done that. Weather conditions, I think, to show this off, obviously these things affect your frame rate. So, we're going to go for springtime, I think. And we'll, we're going to config here and say, we've got visibility here. So, let's say it's a, it's a bit of a hazy day. 10 miles. Um, okay, I can't seem to get precipitation. Clouds, we're going to go for broken clouds, and we're going to give us some light winds in... Spin this around, and we're going to go... Okay, there we go. 7 degrees. So, uh, on a... It's sort of almost northerly, but we've got light winds. Unfortunately, I can't seem to set that as a specific speed. Also, we've got time and season. Uh, yeah, keep those. We've got time and season, so we can actually change whether it's day, night, spring, summer, autumn, winter. All that kind of stuff, which is fairly cool. Clouds, wind, temperature, and visibility all coming soon, so I don't think we can change anything in that. And for the departure airports, I am going to choose something... Should we go from Leeds Bradford? And we'll be, we'll be able to have a look sort of around the Peak District area. And potentially, if we can, we could possibly just fly down to East Midlands. I think we can do that. So we could fly around this area and then we'll come down to the East Midlands. So, And if not, we'll just find another airport somewhere and land. Yeah, let's do that. Uh... I'm not going to click. If we do this, it's giving us a flight plan to click. If I just uh, right click there, it gets rid of it. This is your zoom, so you can see your zoom in and out. Oh dear. I'm somewhere in Africa now. But you can also zoom in and out with your with your mouse wheel, so that's not a problem. And it's got all the roads mapped out as well, so that's pretty fancy. That's a, that's a cool thing that they have mapped out. So you can see all the major cities. So that's uh, Nottingham, Derby, Leicester, Birmingham... Northampton, uh, Luton, and then London. So that that's pretty cool. They've got all those mapped out, and let's just let's just go. Actually, let's do that. We're already 17 minutes in. In order to gain credit for flight time, you must land at an airport. Okay. Right. You guys may have noticed a slight cut um, just there. For some reason, it crashed. It crashed as it started taking off. So. Yeah. Oops. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm not sure what caused it, but uh we're going to give this another go. Uh I've not I've actually just left it at springtime default now, so the weather should be slightly different. Um I I just don't know I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened. So we're just going to try it now with better weather. In any case, when I loaded that in, it was um it looked a bit weird. Uh, the, it, it looked too overcast, not broken clouds, it looked very very overcast. And in any case, this is very similar to the weather I've got outside right now. So I'm actually absolutely roasting in, in my room. I've got a tower fan on, but I can't use a powerful fan because uh, it would just pick up on the microphone. Right, so let's press start here. Even though that's going around, we do have the start available. Um, right, that looks alright. Now, first thing I'm going to say about this is, that's bright. That's a little bit too bright. I'm, I'm not sure why it's that bright. Actually, I do know why it's that bright. It's uh, They were trying to do PBR rendering, and that's also pretty rubbish resolution, to be fair. But early access, going to give them the benefit of the doubt through early access. Uh, da -da -da, don't need that one on. Oh, no, that's off. There we go. Right. Um, I'm going to give them the benefit of the uh, doubt through early access. Okay, 
Uh, and we're just going to see. We're going to see what happens as I take this out for a flight. Uh, what's really interesting is my controls that I just set. Okay, options, views. Uh, I can't actually. Can I? How do I get to my controls? Flight plan. Can I do controls from here? Yes, I can. Great. Uh, the controls I just set, for some reason, it keeps resetting to this virtual joystick and, and setting these as the controls. It didn't, it won't save them, which I, I, I can't, I don't understand. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Everything else seems to be okay. I'm going to switch this to inverted on the prop, on the slider. There we go, because I don't need the spoilers. And I think everything else should have been saved. Maybe it was to do with the crash. I don't know. I do like that though. That we can we can go into this sort of this sort of menu for this. Right. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, hit the brakes! Hit the brakes! Okay. Well, when you come out of the menu, it seems to do that. Okay. Um, what have we got here? So we've got a glass cockpit. So instead of the six pack, we've only got these instruments here. You see your airspeed indicator, your attitude indicator, and your altitude, or your altimeter. No, your altitude indicator. Yeah, and a compass. We do have a compass. Um, everything else seems to be okay. So what have we got? We've got a fuel con quantity, plenty there. Can we, can we do a bit of zooming out? There we go. We can do some zooming out here. That's upside down. I suppose, it's, yeah, it's going to give us which way the... The aircraft is so really I think we're going to try and head over to well we're going to fly over here over this waypoint here over this nav point uh, that's Dean's Cross that's coming out of Edinburgh and then these are going into London these ones here so we're going to do that um, right we've got our we've got our radio here so we can switch those around. Perfect. Uh, push one and two. Yeah, push one and two. Okay, that's fine. What else have we got here? Nav radio. Great. Um, can we do this? Let's see what the... What's the... No, I don't want to do that. How do I get rid of that? So that was the radio. I don't, I don't know how to get rid of that radio now. Oh, there we go. No. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, that's rubbish. I can't, I can't get rid of that now. Okay, well, we're going to put the flaps down one. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, we've got the mixture right the way up. Great. Parking brake will release in a moment. Uh, what's this? Heading indicator we're going to set to be... We're going to head in the direction... Ooh. Let's head around 210. Let's head 210. Um, Alright, so that's a heading sync. That's fine. So we can get a heading sync on there. Right, we'll, we'll head 210. I've never flown this aircraft before, so, you know. Outside temperature is 15 degrees. It's a lot hotter at the moment, actually. That doesn't seem to be... Oh, yes, it does. There we go. We've got an altitude indicator. We'll set that to... I'll say 4,000 feet. We'll go 4,000 feet. Um, can I find anything else here? There's our OBS and CDI is there. Uh, can I... Can I get some information about these aircraft by any chance? No. Got a little map there. That's a good range. I like that. And that's our cruise. Uh, we'll set that. We'll just leave that at... Uh, tell you what. We'll leave that at that heading. 320. And that's back to our radios. We're not going to be using the radios in this one. We're going to fly a little bit VFR. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Um, anything else we can click? Let's see. Can we open this? Oh, we can. We can click that. Yes, we can doesn't change anything on the noise but we can open that up right uh, da, da, da. anything else we can do can we open the door 
Oh, we can open the door, and that definitely... Oh, okay, it's not a door, it's a full cockpit, and that makes a massive difference. Okay, I didn't know it was like that. Let's close that again. I like that, so that's better than what we had in Flight Simulator by default. Um, the, the amount of things that we can press here, I mean, we can click all these circuit breakers here. That's definitely more than what we had in Flight Simulator as well. And this aircraft in particular seems fairly detailed, slightly low on the resolution here and there. Um, there is one aircraft that has a, uh, an overhead panel or part of an overhead panel that is absolutely horrendous. I've not seen anything that re low resolution even in Flight Simulator. But there we go. Um, let's give this a go. Let's zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see more. I think that's enough for me to be able to fly. Right, and uh, let's see. Controls seem to be free. Give it some power. Release the brakes. Get ready for that kick to the left. There it is. I'll use rudder to the right to solve that. Keep the nose down. Whoa! A little bit wobbly. We've got the AccuFeel here kicking in. AccuFeel? I think it's called AccuFeel. Or AccuSim. It's, a, it's an add-on that we had in Flight Simulator. That, um... And there we go, we are up. Let's, uh... Bring the flaps in. We are up and away. Right, and we will... We'll begin our turn in a moment. Right, and there's a uh, Leeds Bradford right there. And yeah, so what was it? Yeah, we've got the AccuFeel or AccuSim. I, I keep forgetting what it's called, which allows us to have those bumps on the runway and all that kind of stuff. It just gives us a much better feel for this. Um, right, let's give ourselves a nice turn to see if we can get a nice coordinated turn going. To a heading of. We're going to see if we can get a heading of 210. There we go. Oh, I've overshot it. Got a bit of rudder kick there. Just, just testing these things out. I'm not going to be doing anything by the book here. Um, like I said, I'm not even throttling up fully um, on this. And we'll probably. Um, I'm not. I'm not even going to bother leaning the engine when we get up there. In fact, I might. Right. Let's have a. Let's have a quick look outside then. So um, there we go. This is now Orbex FTX Global. Um, it doesn't look brilliant, but it's a, It's far better than what we had in Flight Simulator. And let's have a look at the. Right. And that's the sort of frames. Of, in fact, what I'll do is I'll go to that one. There you go. That's the frames that I'm getting. Uh, this is after playing around with NVIDIA Inspector and using the same settings that I have in my flights in uh, FSX and I'm getting similar sorts of frames with better quality graphics so that's a good thing uh, at the start without it the the resolution I mean not the resolution the um, the frame rate is absolutely horrendous oh I hate flying tips and that's a very classic flight simulator flying tip right there now let's see if we can uh, level ourselves off at 4,000. What's my trim like? So I can get myself... Well, 3,500. If we could trim for 3,500. No, we're still climbing. That's all right, though. All right, it wants me to lean the engine. I, I want it to shut up. But there we go. Yeah, that's not too bad. Right, we'll level ourselves off here if we can. So I'm just I'm just trimming the aircraft as best as I can to to level off so we can get some get some decent flying going. Right, and we'll uh, bring that power back a bit. There we go. Not, not trimmed perfectly, but I'm going to bring that power back and see if we can just fly. 
Sli something slightly manual. Like that. Okay, great. So, we're at about 4,000 feet. You get to see a, a decent amount of what's what's around here. Uh, the clouds are... Uh, let's fly through this one and let's see. I'm going to fly through this cloud and see. The clouds are not all that, I'll be honest. Um, they're a little bit... See, the, the problem here is... The problem here is I want to compare this to Prepared. Prepared has volumetric clouds as standard. My flight simulator has Rex environment clouds. So these are better than the default flight simulator, but they're nowhere near as good as what we get in, you know, with an add-on in flight simulator. Now, we're also talking about, don't forget, this is a 10-year-old bit of kit, flight simulator 10. But just look at the resolution of those clouds. That's really, really poor. Again, though, I'm going to say early access. I'm sure they're going to improve that. But that is some pretty poor cloud resolution. And it's not volumetric. And they're not casting shadows on the ground, as you can see. There is no shadow whatsoever on the ground for these for these clouds. You know what? That is annoying me. a little bit as well so yeah I mean the clouds are not I don't know that's pretty poor quality on the cloud front so there we go right let's get ourselves back on track let's take a turn it's gonna go for a heading of 180 now because otherwise we're going to head into Wales and I'm not I'm not intending to head into Wales at this particular moment in time we're also slowing down quite significantly because I am... This this plane does does like to um, balloon very easily. I mean, just a very slight movement on my on my joystick, and it and it, it wants to climb. So that's quite interesting. I find this it's fairly easy to fly this. A lot easier than the add-on aircraft that I'm used to flying. Um, a very very easy aircraft to fly. So again, I think this is just going to or alluding the fact that they're doing this for you know to try and get new people into the sim so we're already at 5,000 feet and what I'll do is I will uh, I'll end this video here and I'll continue with part two take uh, you know continuing on right from right from where we are do I, do I really have to Right. Oh yeah, that's the prop. That's not the mixture. Let's lean it slightly. There you go. Okay, so I'll end it right here, and then I'll continue in the next episode of, of my first impressions, where we'll see if we can find ourselves an airport and uh, get ourselves landing. I'll try try and find myself East Midlands Airport and uh, land over there. And I might just go check out that that little bit of land over there that looks like the peak district to me so we'll go fly over the peak district as well thank you very much for watching please remember to hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel for the next first impressions video of flight sim world by dovetail games early access again don't forget early access it is available now uh for i think 20 pounds and in the next episode i'll be looking more at flying we'll take a landing might try a stall I'll, I'll see what the stalls are like stuff like that um and then we'll we'll land it we'll land it at an airport and i'll give you my final impressions of this first version of early access of flights in world once again thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in the next episode